Okay, so hopefully you are seeing now the no machine client uh, that I'm running. I'm connected to to Cori, um, and I open a, a terminal here where I loaded uh, the module files that you have listed in the in the slides. You can see them there, but uh, you can get the gist of them uh, over here. Um, the trainer and the analyzer and the G and GCC uh, compiler with support for OpenECC. And I have allocated a, a GPU node that I'm actually running uh, and I will run the demo. So uh, again, you can see the, the commands to- Javier, the, um, sorry yeah. to interrupt. Can you make slides, uh, the, the window bigger and the fonts a little bigger as well? Yeah, hopefully. I'll just the- um, Is this better? Uh, I'm not sure why the, the NX window itself is not full screen. And then the terminal is also just half of it. Yeah, it's kind of intended. So later I can open a uh, trainer, but- It's, it's yeah. Is this any better? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, yes, uh, interrupt me anytime if it's not clear with the sound of the images. Okay, so I was saying we are on a GPU node. We have trainer and analyzed uh, loaded. So we will start uh, doing a demo of parallel work trainer, the first of the two products that Manuel presented. Uh, so the first thing I will do is I will just uh, launch uh, parallel work trainer. You can simply do that by invoking your trainer. So I will also make this uh, bigger. Let me know if uh, it's too wide for your screens or anything. Hopefully it's okay. So uh, you you just seeing a, an screenshot of this uh, graphical user interface that the Fireware Trainer uh, offers. It's kind of like a lightweight integrated development environment where you can just uh, open any uh, source uh, folder that you have, any project, and start experimenting right away with different parallelizations. And it's divided in the in the projects uh, explorer where you can just uh, browse the different source files and click them on create any file well, like like any IDE, the editor and just the version manager. Then we have several consoles here on the on the bottom. So uh, the Power Trainer comes with a glossary that uh, comes in handy when you are uh, learning. So like I said before, the trainer is intended for uh, experimenting and learning, then the more advanced user will probably be more comfortable with a parallel analyzer that offers this and some other features. And here you can browse different terms and get different levels of details. And it also comes with some uh, bundle examples that you can install from here. So I will just do that. Um, I will do, do this in the, in the scratch. Okay, so it confirms that it was successfully copied uh, on the examples folder there. I will just open that folder right away. Okay, so this is the folder created just now. And here you have different folders, okay? The text folder have uh, different examples for what Manuel uh, showed before, uh, where you can get, for instance, different uh, defects and recommendations quickly show this. So again, you have all this information available uh, in line in the in the Power Word Trainer. That defect, all these all the recommendations here. But uh, I'm interested now in showing you a demonstrator with the with the Pi code example. So uh, here you have other codes. We will use Mandelbrot uh, later for analyzer. And you have these three examples that cover the basic uh, quick start with Trainer. Let's open Pi. Um, you will see that there is a, a readme file where it shows different features of uh, analysis that this example will cover. So by going through these uh, examples in the quick start folder, you can get an idea uh, of all the features offered by, by analysis. So right now, uh, we will work with this Pi file. I just double click it in the Project Explorer. And it shows here, um, green circle, which it's an opportunity for parallelization. But before parallelizing it, I want to execute this and see what the sequential version, uh, what performance does it have. 
um, I will just check here the I will increase the size of the problem. So it takes a little bit more time. I uh, used to, when this is my laptop, it's slower. And you can just click run. And of course, uh, we just open a folder with uh, source files. So a uh, trainer doesn't have any idea of how to build and run your code. So we will fill that information. We just enter the make file, uh, the make command, sorry, and then the make run command. Over. Click OK, and then it will first build it and then run it. So you see that in its dedicated console, you see the output for its states. So this is the output for the build and then the output for the run. So it, it took uh, over one second to execute the sequential version of the code. So let's see what Trainer can do for us. Let's click the green circle. Um, We've seen before, there are a bunch of options here. We can select for OpenMP, OpenACC, standards, CPU, GPUs, and different paradigms. Just leave it as it is. Let's try with the default options what the parallelization uh, looks like. So maybe you've just noticed that a version was created here on the right in the version manager. You can at any time restore the version, clicking on this button, or create a new version here. For instance, I will create now a by OpenMP new version. So one of the key things that you can do with Trainer in a very quick way is to switch back and forth between different versions and perform experimentations. So let's experiment with this uh, parallelized version of Pi. So I will just click run. It is building again, then executing. And now we see that the time is slightly over half a second. Okay, before it was one second, now it's down to uh, a little bit more than half a second. Okay, so now we've covered um, the first uh, parallelization. We can make some tests here to see what actually, how many threads they are being run here. I will add this print. Uh, number of threads. And you get that information with uh, open get, get threads. Sorry. So let's try that, build again. Okay, so it's, since this is in the side of parallel region, it's thread is reporting the total number of threads uh, in this group, which is four, that's great. And parallel where uh, also allows you to customize this using environment variables, which is, sorry, which is uh, quite typical when you are um, using OpenMP, so we can just, Enter here uh, a smaller number of threads. And now when we run again, it will update. Sorry, I messed with the, with the output. I will clear just to make it clear. So I run again. And here you have just two threads. Okay, so the time increased a little bit, but not, uh, not so much. Okay, so. I just wanted to show how you can easily set that here. I will remove it now. And let's go back to the original version. So we have saved the, the this parallelized version here. I will now restore the original. No work has been wasted since, since I created that version. And let's try it with a different parallelization. So I will stick with OpenMP uh, for multi-threading for the CPU. But I want to try a different strategy. Uh, before, by default, Parallel Analyzer, uh, sorry, Parallel Trainer, uh, use a reduction over the sum variable. Right now, we want to try something different and see if it makes a difference in performance. So I will use something called explicit privatization, which, as you will see right now, it is uh, creating uh, a private variable that. That's what reduction does uh, behind the scenes. So it is this private variable that is uh, private to each of the threads that run in parallel. Uh, I will just click run, and we see that the time is pretty similar. Okay. So if we wanted, we can again set this version like by uh, explicit, for instance, for explicit prioritization. I will restore the original version again and try something different this time. We have a 
another strategy, which is atomic protection, which is which will use the atomic clause from OpenMP. So let's see what does that does look like. Uh, it's this parameter right here. So if we hit run, we can see that this is taking already a little bit longer to execute. And as a matter of fact, this is quite inefficient because this causes a lot of synchronization between the threads. Since I don't want to spend too much time uh, with, the, with the demo, I will just stop the process, but uh, this can uh, go on for quite a few, few seconds. So we can stop the task at any time, hitting here. And it aborted after 27 seconds. So this is this was way, way worse than what we were doing. Okay, so back again to the original. Let's try something different again. Let's keep experimenting with the different options that we have in, in trainer. Uh, now I want to go for the for the GPU. So I will have to change the compile command because I don't have in the make file the instructions to do the compilation with offloading. So we just enter here the command with for GCC. If I go with OpenMP, I need to specify the so the This of course you can uh, update your make file instead of doing it here. Okay, hopefully I type it correctly. Let me just try one second. Okay, seems like the syntax is correct. Great. So back to the parallelization options. So now I will try opening PPAT with uploading to the GPUs. Okay, so here we have the directives. Um, let's see what happens when we run this. Well, actually it's worse, but I think it's because I forgot that uh, you need to run it through SRAM so that it takes advantage of the GPU on core. Well, not much of a difference, it's still over three seconds. So it seems that for this computation, uh, the time that we got on the GPU is worse. Okay, let's try with open ACC, see if it makes any difference. Sorry, I forgot. I have to change the plug here from OpenMP to OpenACC. Otherwise, it will just never mind the flux. I will clear this. So it seems that the OpenACC implementation uh, turned out a little bit better. So now it's uh, a comment uh, here. GPU, uh, on GPU with GCC compiler, um, it's not as good as the other compilers I mentioned uh, in my talk, which is uh, LLVM yeah. for uh, OpenMP and, uh, and HPC SDK for, for OpenACC. So this is just for uh, you know directives and code of, uh, modification purposes, use GCC is great, but for your performance, please use other compilers. Yeah, absolutely right. Like the same applies, like you said before, for open ACC. I mean, it depends on the exact technology uh, you want to change your compiler. Here we are just doing all the demos with GCC, but uh, that's absolutely right, and you should uh, pay good attention to that. Okay, so uh, I know I'm spinning a little bit. We are a little bit tight on on time, but uh, hopefully, using the different options that uh, you can. Uh, perform or you can implement with Power Trainer different parallelizations and how you can quickly 
switch between different versions. Here I just saved one, one of these versions, but I could just restore it again. I would have created more versions as I did different publications. And the key here is that you can experiment and you can also uh, dive in these terms here and have this glossary, which is really, really handy when you are learning and you are getting started with this and of course making quick modifications. You also have the effects and recommendations uh, that should guide you whenever you make a, a important mistake or something that we can detect. So we hope that uh, you benefit from, from all of this. So I know, Manuel, if you have any remarks regarding trainer or we shall move to analyzer. Uh, <clears throat> I think we shall, we shall move to analyze. I think we, it discovers the basic usage to experiment with the trainer from the CPU, using the CPU or the GPU, the versioning system. So I think it's, it covers the basis of the usage of the tool. So I think it's, it's good. Yes, thank you. So move. It's great. Forward. Thank you for the, for the demo. Yeah, I, I think it uh, covers what we need to learn firsthand. <laughs> great. Okay. So let's move back to the panel here. Again, we are still on the node. We executed the power trainer from there so we could uh, run the commands uh, directly on the GPU node. Uh, of course, uh, more remarks uh, along the lines of the compilers. This may not be the best practice uh, for your scenarios. You may be interested in CPUs or building on the logging nodes if you are targeting CPUs. So bear that in mind. But uh, here, we just want to make the demo as, as fast uh, and, and easy as, as possible. Can you increase the font size a little bit again, please? Yes. Let me, this is better. Yeah, it's, it's better if you can make it even bigger. Whoa, okay. Okay. Uh, maybe this is nice. Yeah. Let's see if it fits in the, in the screen. I hope so. Yes, uh, feel free to interrupt me again if it's not enough, okay? Uh, so going back to, to the demos, we've been seeing the functionality that Parallel Training had. Now this functionality is available in Analyzer and some more. So uh, I will move to the, um, to the same examples that I installed with um, Parallel Trainer. So examples, I mean, you, you can see again what we've seen before. We have some examples here for the checks, the three of the quick start and some other codes that we can experiment with. So right now I will focus on Mandelbrot. And it's just a simple single file. Let me see, okay. And like Manuel presented before, uh, Parallel Analyzer is composed of four tools. It's PW Report, PW Check, PW Loops, and PW Directive. So uh, the first tool that we normally recommend is PW Report. It is the entry point that provides high level reports that should help you uh, get an idea of what the code looks like. Here is a simple code, just Mandelbrot, a single file. But this works, as we will see uh, at the end, it will have enough time for large code bases. Uh, in this case, we see the code coverage summary of uh, the analysis, and then a summary of what it has found. In this case, one recommendation and two opportunities for parallelization. Okay, so uh, one of the key things is that we want to always suggest where to go next. Again, PW report is the first uh, tool that you should use, the entry uh, tool. So if uh, you want to get some details on what is not analyzable, it offers your recommendation. If you are uh, interested in defects and recommendation, it tells you to use PW check and for opportunities, PW loops. Right. So uh, let's start by using PW check. And it reports here one recommendation, it could be this one over here. And then a summary on the bottom of all the different recommendations. In this case, it just detected this one. It is telling you that you should rather pass the individual um, struct fields as parameter instead of the whole matrix. We can also tweak the code a little bit to show you an example of another recommendation. So what I will do is uh, this iter variable here I will move it outside the loops, okay? the declaration. So 
apply it to here. You can just cancel here. Undefine it by that. That should be enough. So I run PW check again, and I get a new recommendation. Okay, now it forms a couple of them. So I can move this a little bit. Okay. So here you have it. It is telling you that you should move back uh, the declaration ether to the innermost possible scope, which in this case is where it was correctly defined before, right here. So this is another example, one of the of those samples that Manuel uh, went over before. That is uh, really interesting in, in many many scenarios. Okay, so this is a quick glimpse of what you can get with PWCheck. Also, bear in mind that we are seeing uh, in this case. Um, recommendations, but it can also report defects. This is very useful, for instance, when you want to use this tool in, in a scenario where you integrate this, for instance, in a continuous integration on continuous delivery system, such as uh, Jenkins. Uh, so in its pool to your JIT uh, repository, you would run PW check and ensure that there are no data races um, available here. One of the analysis that PW check has is a data race analysis that will output you uh, CSV file that you can easily process. So uh, one of the targets is that we easily integrate with these kind of tools that uh, allows you to automate these kind of checks, like for instance, the data race analysis or data movement issues uh, regarding the, the GPU. Okay, so uh, back to what PW report was telling us before. Uh, we can now try PW loops. So uh, just now I was talking about how you can use PW check to detect defects, but uh, regarding the recommendations, this would be like the first stage, the stage number one that Manuel introduced before, which was preparing the code for parallels. So uh, you, you would rather use these recommendations to prepare the code, address those that uh, are, for instance, in your hot spots in your code that you need to prepare, for instance, to bring to the GPU. Okay, so we would be preparing the code Parallelism. Say now that you have identified those hot spots, follow that recommendations to uh, prepare the code. Now we are done with the stage one and we want to move to stage two, which consists in creating a parallel version of your code. So PW loops can help you with that. Let's execute PW loops for the Mandelbrot file. I will provide a um, uh, report with the different loops that defines in the code and different properties. So the first uh, property is whenever we can analyze this code or not. This means that uh, the language features pres present in the code are supported by parallel. So of course, this is a, uh, yeah, a requirement that we are able to analyze the code. Uh, then it comes which compute patterns we have been able to identify in the code. So this is uh, key just to allow us to give you an opportunity for parallelism. So for instance, in this case, we detect that there, are, there is a for all pattern and a multi-threading opportunity here in Mandelbrot at line 30, okay? And we also provide you with information that we can uh, parallelize it with the two PW directives. This is what this means here. And also there is no value for the parallelized column, meaning that there is no uh, directives of parameter. This is not a loop that it has been already parallelized. Okay, so uh, say that we are interested, for instance, in the loops in this function, Mandelbrot. Uh, we can use the different sub analysis available in PW loops. One very useful analysis would be the data scoping analysis, which provides more detail about the different variable uses. I will filter here the Mandelbrot function. Of the Mandelbrot C file. Okay, so lots of information, which are for each loop. Here we have one at line 30, another one at line 31. Each of the variables that are part of those loops, and what kind of variables there are, what kind of uses is there, there are in that in that loop. When it's for instance for height, it is a width only use. For the variable call, it is a read and write. Whenever the variables are temporary, which is key for some uh, operations when we are parallelizing code. Whenever we detect a for all pattern, what kind of memory pattern we detect, for instance, here for the output array, which is written only, 
there is a for all compute pattern and there is a role major access. And then some information about the open POCC, open ECC practice. One of the great feedback that we receive is that this simplifies enormously uh, the job of those people who have to parallelize code and um, spend a lot of time analyzing the different data scoping of the variables that are in a loop, which is key. Uh, it's a key step before you go and parallelize by inserting, for instance, uh, directives. So um, yeah, along these lines, you have another analysis, which may be uh, of interest. Let's change it here. And it is the memory footprint analysis. So, uh, so I was just uh, showing you how over here, let me scroll up a bit, the output array is of very much interest. And in the memory footprint analysis, we can actually see the array ranges that there are accesses, in this case for for rating. Uh, this, again, is very useful information when you are parallelizing and you need to know what pieces of information uh, are involved. Not always the whole array is written to or read from, you may be only a subset. And this is key, for instance, when offloading to the GPU because you want to minimize, minimize sorry, the uh, data transfers and the movements of data between the CPU memory and the GPU memory. Okay, and then there are other useful analysis here, for instance, I've been talking all the time about the code, but probably you don't. Just to add to that, while you are typing, mm -hmm. uh, essentially with these features, we are exposing uh, the core of the parallel technology that classifies every single access pattern into each dimension of every single array in your codes. So there is a, a lot of opportunity for improvement on our side on the preciseness precision of this access pattern description, but we wanted to expose it uh, in this course because we think it's a, it's a good tool to understand or to help in moving uh, data to the GPU because you need to know what arrays need to be moved, but somehow you also need to know why or when analyzer or trainer are not able to determine the array ranges, you need more information of what array references could not be characterized properly. So this is the kind of sequence of invocations to parallel tools that we are designing to help you in that regard. And the difference between memory access patterns and memory footprint is that memory access patterns, we try to collect, describe precisely the order of all of the access to the array. So row major dictates the order at runtime of access to the elements. While uh, memory footprint, what is interested is in what elements have been touched, read or written. Because essentially, you don't want to know the order. You want to know the subsections of the arrays that will need to be transferred to the GPU. No, it doesn't matter the order in which they are processed in the loops. Okay. So this, are the first, this is the first time we expose these two um, uh, analysis, which we think will be helpful. But just make you aware that it's the first time we expose it. And we are working to improve the robustness and the precision of the access pattern description that you will find there. Okay, just for clarification. Okay, right. So um, what I did in the meantime, I just invoked this minus minus code uh, sub analysis of PW loops for the function Mandelbrot. So we could see the code itself. Uh, in this case, annotated with a P, which stands for a parallelization opportunity, in this case for not defrauding. So this is the output uh, right that we have been talking about. And you just seen the information about which ranges it is written to, which, as you can see, is not that self-evident uh, or so obvious and also all the data scoping for this loop, which we see in the data scoping use case over there. Sorry, I scroll a little bit. I found this a little bit uh, too big. So this is what I was referring to. And again, the output variable that I was just referring to. So, uh, okay, there are a lot, 
more options, some more use cases, for instance, uh, going back to the main PW loops analysis, you can see that there are a couple of loops that are non-analyzable. For those cases, you also have a sub-analysis, let's see, it could be PW loops. Yes, analyzable. So to see, in some cases, there's, there are some minor issues that can be fixed, because in this case, uh, it is that the pointer to extract piece cannot be analyzable. These are classical limitations that some cases we can overcome and in other cases uh, we don't. But we hope to provide some useful messages to this use case to see if you can improve the code coverage of parallel work. Okay, so uh, now we, we have seen through parallel groups that this one right here may be a good opportunity uh, for a parallelism, and in this case for multi-threading. So let's just give it a try. Uh, for that, again, we are in stage two. We want to parallelize the code. We have uh, our next tool, which will be PW directives. Okay. So PW directives, uh, you have some options here that correlate to those that you've seen in trainer. So for OpenMP, you can parallelize for multi-threading, for tasking using uh, a couple of different options, and the same for flowing with or without teams. And you can also um, generate directives for the OpenACC for the GPU. So uh, in this case, the loop that we are interested in is this one here under broad at line uh, 30, which is a multi-frame opportunity, and it is telling us here that PW directives supports it. Okay, so I will try this and invoke PW directives. Okay, and I will use the output file option to generate a new file called Mandelberg OpenMP.c. I, there's no need to specify OpenMP. I will run with the default iterations. Okay, uh, let's see. I should have a new file. Right, right. Uh, we got OpenMP. Uh, pretty much like you've seen before in Trainer, we have the code with the directives generated for it. So again, we can try to build this with okay, OpenMP. Uh, let's just execute it with a problem size of 3,000. All right, what I have not done, I will do that for now, is execute the sequential version, which is the Mandelbrot C. And let's go Mandelbrot. And let's see what, how long does it take for the same problem size? All right, a little bit more than than twice as much. So uh, this uh, default naive first uh, parallelization seems to be working for this uh, particular algorithm, which is great. This is similar to what we have been doing in the trainer uh, in the graphical interface. So uh, like I said before, PW Directives has more options. We could try uh, some other different options. For instance, we can parallelize for, oh, sorry. Just to show you again the options. So I will now pass, generate a new version. In this case, I will say OpenMP GPU. So let's add the OpenMP flag and tell it that we want overloading. So, okay, so we will see that in this case, I will, sorry, I will just use the editor. So the key here is that uh, for the GPU, we need to transfer the output uh, by dimensional array. And this is tricky because there is no deep copy as Manuel uh, talked about before in the presentation. So we have to use enter data and then do the computation on the GPU and then the exit data. So we can uh, copy the continuous segments of this uh, non-contiguous memory structure 
to the GPU, so that all the map is all the data sorry is properly mapped back and forth the the GPU. Okay, and finally, let's see just a different validation also for the GPU, but in this case, let's go with OpenACC. So we will change the name of the output file. Okay, so let's take a look. And um, here you have the open ACC fragments. Okay, for this, like we were talking before, uh, for each technology or platform or hardware that you target, there is a different uh, recommended compiler. In this case, I will go with the um, uh, NVIDIA SDK to use the former PGI compiler. And I will compile this. See, for open ECC, I will get some information of the parallelization in the process. And pass the file, ECC, GPU, so. So here we have the information from M-Info telling us what it has parallelized. Uh, let's try it. For the GPU, we need to use Erlang. This time I don't forget. Um, yes. Okay. Let's pass. And you have seen that right now it was way faster than all the previous versions. Either the sequential one, of course, and the one parallelized with OpenMP. Uh, well, so I have to. I have changed the environment, but you have, you've seen it before. So in any case, uh, the GPU, we are over uh, in less than, than half a second. And the serial version, we are in you know, about three seconds. So uh, these are the different uses of uh, different tools of Paraguay Analyzer. We have seen stages one and two. Now you would go to the stage three, you could run again PW check to see if there are any recommendations regarding optimizations, for instance, uh, regarding the GPU data transfers, that would be a, a typical case. And also check for correctness. Say that now you tweak any of these directives that uh, PW2 uh, directives uh, inserted for you, and you introduce some mistake, for instance, uh, incorrectly sharing a variable, and it introduces a data race. So that's where PW check can help you again by reporting that data race to you. Okay, uh, Manuel, any remarks here? Do we have time to see some of the advanced features uh, that Analyzer has, or shall we? I would just remark that remember that to come to this stage, you should have completed the stage one to prepare the call for parallelism. This is what we are assuming in many of these demonstrations where you can benefit through parallel tools of the performance of the different implementations of the compiler supporting OpenMP and OpenACC. So this is stage number two, where you really don't care about performance. We have shown you cases that speed up. We also have cases where if you're not ca uh, careful enough, you can generate code that slows down because you are at stage two. And then we will don't have today to go through stage three optimization. So I hope that in the hands-on and during these two weeks, we have time to interact with you to, pre to help you in the three stages of the call. And just, I would say, Javi, at least uh, five minutes so that they can see uh, the tools, the power analyzer running on bigger code bases. I think that, that might be useful, at least to show it very, very briefly without going to, into many details. Okay, um, so let me, well, I will just show a quick option here. Oh, sorry. Got my, have my focus on the screen. Uh, so I was telling you before that integration is important. I mean, uh, one of the use cases is uh, integrating this, for instance, with Jenkins. So you may very well want to get this report in some other format. So for instance, we support JSON and C++ 
CSV uh, outputs. So you, mm, you don't have to rely always on uh, console uh, reports, okay? So uh, some other features. Manuel was mentioning, for instance, uh, running over larger uh, code bases. So let's see here, for instance, the NAS parallel benchmarks, in this case, um, OpenMP parallelized version, it contains uh, some more files. Uh, we can analyze this also with the natural first step would be PW report. And I already know that I need some common folder here. What I'm doing here, this is something that we have not seen uh, in the demos before, is that we need to pass an include directory to the PW report because uh, it needs to have access to all the include header files that are consumed by the source code. So in this case, there are some header files here in common. So we just use GCC and clown uh, style syntax to tell it that it should look there when it is analyzing other code. Uh, we're running in short of time, but otherwise I would show that when you do not pass this, uh, you can get a, a report with the errors that you will see that, okay, you are lacking some uh, header files, so you will get to add this flash yourself. So this is more like a magic okay. we can, we can. Okay, we can use the, the Thursday time and to show more of the advanced features. Okay. After your home demo. Okay, right, sure, sure, that, that makes sense. Uh, the other two features so that I was intending to show is just yes, uh, that uh, you can uh, use CMake, uh, a CMake build to get information on these header files that I was just talking about. But here are some results that you have. For instance, we detect that there are over 10,000 lines of code parallelized over the total of 25,000 lines. We find a pretty large number of recommendations and opportunities for parallelism. And we can even guarantee not only detect that some loops uh, contain data races, but also guarantee that some loops are data race free, which is quite a, a hard uh, problem to solve. Uh, we can do that in many cases. Um, so, Manuel, do you want to see something about uh, CMake or Multifile or some of these features? Or, like uh, she suggested, leave that for another day. I think we should uh, move it to Thursday. Just mention here that we have shown capabilities to work inside a function, one file, but in big applications, you will have to address other technical challenges. That, the, that is, how can you analyze code where the functions are spread across multiple files? So we have features for that. How can you interact with build systems because Analyzer and Parallelware, the Parallelware technology needs the compilation flags. So instead of having to type them all, we can interact with CMake databases to read those flags without you having to type them and uh, replicate them for the input of the analyzer tool. So integration with build systems. And also the tools are designed to be integratable with uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery frameworks. So like Jenkins, that are usually based on invoking scripts that contain commands to command line tools. So these command line tools can be one of those tools. We, we need to study, analyze yet ways of tighter integration with different types of continuous integration, continuous delivery systems, but we are working in that, that direction. So if we have time, we will go and demonstrate those advanced features for big code bases on Thursday. 